we have some exciting news. And by we, I mean me, my third personality, my fifth personality, my 40th personality. All of us made patio chairs. For somebody who struggles to make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches without burning down my kitchen, this is huge. Head over to my Instagram, there's going to be diagrams, there's going to be pictures of how the chair should look when you're attaching the seat and the back together. There's going to be the measurement list, the cut list, there's going to be any additional information that supplements the video over on my Instagram in the FAQ highlight reel. While you're over there, follow me on Instagram for more behind the scenes, mini thrift hauls, thrift flips, and a lot of shopping trips. I hope you guys decide to join the Instagram family. If you want to make your own patio chairs, here's what you're gonna need. Of course, a pencil for marking guidelines. Tape is optional. A quarter inch coarse threaded rod. I purchased six feet per chair. Shears to cut the tape and also the tags off the rods. They were so hard to come off. I chose to finish my chairs with paint, but feel free to use what you like, whether that's stain or just a poly coat. Quarter inch washers and quarter inch hex nuts for holding your chair together. If you're making one chair, you will need eight washers and eight nuts. If you're making two chairs, just double it. You'll need 16 of each. If you're making three chairs, how many hex nuts and how many washers do you need? Comment below. Safety first and a little bit of fun. A sander or a sanding block. I used a small spade bit to make lead holes for my drill to grip onto. And of course you need a drill or a drill press. You'll need a 5 drill bit. You don't need a miter saw, you can get the same results with a table saw or a chop saw. And the crowd goes wild for the MVP measuring tape. And of course, you're going to need your project plans, your cut list with your whole placements. The full list will be available on my Instagram FAQ highlight reel and in the description box. For this project, you're going to need to rip down two 2x4x10s into thirds. Accounting for the size of the blade in your saw, the measurement might be different from mine. Just remember, rip into thirds. Once you've ripped down your 2x4s, you're going to proceed with your smaller cuts per the project plans. The total amount of pieces needed for one chair is 25. Two 42 inch pieces, two 35 inch pieces, six 15 inch pieces, nine 9 and an eighth inch pieces, two 29 and 3 quarter inch pieces, and four 31 and a half inch pieces. This chair is held together by the quarter inch coarse threaded rod. You're going to be threading the rod through the holes you made in the wood and cross your fingers that all of the holes line up. The full cut list and material list will be available on my Instagram FAQ highlight reel and in the description box below. Here's a tip. Ensure you're drilling the holes into the wide face of the wood. This is the face that is more wide than it is narrow. This is very important, so stay focused. I found it easy to keep my plans handy while measuring and cutting. You don't want to have to move away from your workspace very often. Sometimes with all of the numbers, things can get a little crazy. Keep your plans handy. Save yourself the stress. Measure twice, cut once. I'm speaking from experience. The most helpful tip in this whole video would be to set up a stop block so that you don't have to measure and drill every single piece of wood like I painfully did. Don't be like Tania. The kerf or the amount of wood removed when cutting affects your measurements. I'd recommend using a finishing blade on whichever saw you're using. A thin kerf blade allows for less wasted wood, sawdust, and more accurate cuts. Okay, let's build this thing. You can choose to sand or not, although I suggest it so that you can get a smooth, finished product. 
You can choose to sand the pieces before or after your cuts. I chose before because I can get it all done in a few passes of the sander versus each individual piece. I love these clamps by the way. I'm using treated wood for these patio chairs because I am going to be using them outside. Also I just wanted an excuse to use my sander because I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> I made some mistakes. When it comes to measuring, I originally made the mistake of measuring each cut on a full piece of wood and then cutting all of the pieces at one time on my miter saw. Well, sometimes your saw gate moves, the wind blows, you sneeze, a bird attacks you, things happen that causes your wood to shift. So here's a tip, measure one piece, cut it, and then measure again. Don't try to get away with shortcuts. If you have a stop block set up, then you're just smarter than me. Unpopular opinion, for this project specifically, I didn't really want any knots, so pick the wood depending on what you like. Before drilling your holes, ensure that you find the center of the wood. If you don't, the chair won't be sturdy and your holes won't line up for the threading. If you have a drill press, then this will be easy for you. I don't, so manual it is. When you're drilling manually, it's important that your holes are perpendicular. If you slant them, you might fall out of the chair and flat on your face. Minor exaggeration. <laughs> Did I say how much I love these clamps? I love these clamps! To assemble the back rest of the chair, you should have a total of 8 pieces of wood. Each piece should have the first hole drilled on the wide face of the wood at 1.5 inches from the left edge. The second hole should be drilled on all 8 pieces at 25 inches from the same left edge. Do not measure the 25 inches from the right or the opposite edge of the first hole. All of your measurements and guides should be marked off the same edge. Use your quarter inch threaded rod and thread it through the one and a half inch holes on each piece of wood. This will be the top of the chair. Next is joining the chair seat and connector pieces to the back of the chair. Space each back piece about an inch and a half wide just enough to allow the connector pieces of the seat to fall between every other space that you made. Adjust as necessary and be sure each piece falls correctly. This could take lots of little adjustments. Take a deep breath and keep going. And don't worry, here's a tip to feel less crazy. All of your holes should be matching up at this point. It helped me to remember that two 9 and 1 8 connector pieces are on the outside of the chair. This helps you to fill in all of the additional spaces correctly. Now it's time to thread again. It's nearly impossible to get the rod through the holes cleanly unless you use the drill press and your holes are all perpendicular. To help push the rod through, tape the rod end and attach it to your drill. It could take some muscle, but drill for your life. Once you've threaded your rods through all four sections, tighten them up by pushing the back top section and the seat sections together. Cut off the excess rod with a hacksaw or bolt cutters and attach your washers and hex nuts to each of the eight ends. Tighten them up as needed and voila! You're all done! I'm so obsessed with my new patio chairs. They're so lightweight and easy to move around but heavy duty enough to feel secure while sitting and sipping on bevies on football Sundays or on cool evenings with family. What I really love about this design is that it folds. If you need to move it around or take it to a beach picnic, this chair is the perfect traveler. Maybe you're tight on space at home or just want to have extra seating for your post-COVID get-togethers. This chair makes life so easy. It's super comfortable and makes kicking up your feet from the DIY VIP section the best seat in or outside the house. We made patio chairs! Surprise! I am going to be renovating my entire outdoor patio from start to finish with these patio chairs being the first of many DIYs on the channel for the outdoor patio series. So if you haven't subscribed yet, you might want to hit the subscribe button, like the video so you can stay up to date on when I post videos and when there's new builds in the works. You can check out more videos on my channel and there's also bloopers on my Instagram. Thanks for watching homies. Bye!